Ever caught yourself in the middle of a judgment, only to wonder where that thought even came from? Now, what if I told you those judgments might say more about you than anything else? Intrigued? Today, we're diving deep into the realm of judgment, but with a twist. We're time-traveling back to the days of the Roman Empire to have a chat with an emperor. But hold on, this is no ordinary emperor. This is Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher emperor who, quite frankly, could give a master class on judgment. In this episode, we're not just exploring the world of judgment, but we're going to do it wearing the toga of a philosopher emperor. So, let's fasten our mental seatbelts and get ready for a wild ride into the world of Marcus Aurelius. Alright, we've started on a high note with our philosopher emperor, now let's take a moment to tread through the muddy waters of etymology. Judgment, quite an impressive word, isn't it? Have you ever paused to ponder where it springs from? In fact, if we start dissecting it like an etymological surgeon, we'll trace it back to the Latin judicium, which meant a judicial decision verdict. Now isn't that an interesting nugget of history? Picture it this way. The word judgment is like a tree, deeply rooted in its Latin origins, but with branches that have stretched and grown, touching various aspects of our lives today. Now, fast-forwarding through time, let's examine how the understanding of judgment diverges in different cultures and philosophies. Just as different flowers bloom under the same sun, each philosophy has its own unique take on judgment. For instance, Eastern philosophies often view judgment as a hindrance to understanding the true essence of life. It's like trying to observe a beautiful painting through tinted glasses. On the flip side, the Western philosophical tradition often views judgment as an essential cog in the machinery of logic and reasoning. It's like being a detective in the mystery novel of life, piecing together evidence to form a coherent picture. Isn't it peculiar how a single word can hold such diverse interpretations? This isn't a mathematics exam where there's only one correct answer. No, this is life, where multiple truths coexist side by side. And now, for a bit of controversy, just to spice things up. Here it is, judgment isn't a flaw, but a feature of human cognition. We might like to dream of a judgment-free utopia, but in reality, could we even function without judgment? As we stroll through this labyrinth of thoughts, remember, the beauty of philosophy is that it opens doors, rather than closing them. Next up, we'll be climbing onto the shoulders of some philosophical giants to get a better view. So, let's see what other philosophical perspectives can offer on this intriguing journey of judgment. Now, let's traverse through time and space to ancient Rome. Let's teleport ourselves into the mind of none other than Marcus Aurelius. As a philosopher-emperor, he had an intriguing vantage. Cloaked in the regal mantle of an emperor and the thoughtful shroud of a philosopher, he walked the tightrope between judgment and discernment, each day. But how did he manage it? Well, peering into his personal diary, the meditations, gives us some tantalizing insights. For Aurelius, judgment wasn't a detached, cold process. Rather, it was as personal as a handwritten letter, as intimate as a secret whispered into the ear. Aurelius argued that our judgments reflect not the world, but our internal framework. Consider this, if we look at the world through rose-colored glasses, do we see the world for what it is, or are we simply projecting our own hues onto it? And what if we switch these rosy spectacles with a pair of blue ones? The world seems to change its color, doesn't it? But in reality, the world remains as it is the change is in our perception, in our judgment. Humorously, it's like being a chameleon on a tartan rug, constantly changing our colors based on what we see. And yet, like the chameleon, we're often unaware that we're adapting to the pattern beneath us, not the reality. Could it be then, that our judgment is the mirror that reflects our inner selves, our fears, our biases, more than it depicts the external world? Here's a daring idea, which might ruffle a few feathers. Suppose Aurelius was right. Suppose our judgment is more about us than it is about the world. Then aren't we, in our daily acts of judgment, silently confessing who we are? Aurelius's meditations are a trove of wisdom that urges us to ponder these questions. They steer us towards the stoic principle of prosoch, attention, 
directing us to the way we perceive the world. Not to mention the concept of apathia, a tantalizing state of indifference to the things beyond our control. But hold your horses. We'll delve deeper into these fascinating Stoic principles. In the world of Stoicism, prosoke or attention isn't just about keeping your eyes wide open. No, it's more akin to tuning a vintage radio. You know, turning the dial ever so slowly, adjusting the antenna, all to catch the clearest signal amid the static? That's prosoke, a deliberate, mindful focus on the present moment, on our immediate perceptions, and yes, our judgments. But how does this tie into judgment? Well, imagine for a moment, you're an archaeologist. Would you just wildly swing your shovel, hoping to unearth something? Or would you carefully brush away the sand, pay attention to every tiny detail, every grain? That's how Aurelius viewed judgment. Not as a wild swing of a shovel, but as a careful brushing away of our preconceptions, our biases, our fears. So, it's all about the attention we give to our judgment, the scrutiny we apply. But what about the things we can't control? Here's where another fascinating stoic concept enters the stage, apathia. Now, don't mistake it for apathy, far from it. Apathia is a sort of serenity, an elegant indifference, towards the things beyond our control. Imagine, if you will, you're a surfer. The ocean's waves, their ebb and flow, isn't really in your hands, is it? Does that mean you remain passive? Just float about aimlessly? Of course not. You understand the wave, you adapt, you ride it. That's apathia, understanding what's in your control, riding the wave, and what's not the wave itself. It's a dance, really. Now, how about this for a bit of controversy? Maybe, just maybe, it's not about casting perfect judgments, but rather about understanding the imperfect nature of judgment itself. And that, perhaps, is where true wisdom lies. But let's leave that thought hanging in the air, like a tantalizing piece of fruit just out of reach. Now, having dipped our toes in the vibrant sea of Aurelius's thoughts, let's move on to a different beach. How about we try applying these principles in the sandy shores of our real lives? And remember, it's not about judging the waves, it's about riding them. It's story time. We all love stories, don't we? Especially the ones that are rooted in reality, where the protagonists grapple with life and come out on top, just like the old movies we love. So, here's one for you. Imagine for a moment, a man named John. Picture him in the middle of a personal crisis, heartbreak to be exact. His world was falling apart, but instead of spiraling down into despair, John took a leaf out of Aurelius' book. He dusted off his judgment, examined his pain like a jeweler would a diamond. Was the hurt coming from the loss itself, or from his perception of the loss? He realized that his judgment, clouded by emotions, was amplifying his pain. So, he did a little mental gymnastics, exercised prosoke, gave his judgment a thorough spring cleaning. And guess what? It worked. Now let's say hello to our second hero of the day, Maria, a talented executive. Picture her navigating a professional challenge, a hostile takeover bid. Instead of panicking, she dons the cloak of apathia. She understands the waves of the business world are beyond her control, but her response to them isn't. So, she focuses on her reaction, her decision-making. Much like a seasoned chef tasting and adjusting the broth, she added a pinch of patience here a dash of boldness there. And voila! The perfect recipe for success was served. Now, this might ruffle some feathers, but isn't life just a series of crises and challenges? A roller coaster ride where we clutch our seats one moment and throw our hands up the next? These stories aren't rare. In fact, we're all Johns and Marias, tackling life with our own versions of prosoke and apathia. Now, how about a riddle? What is practical yet profound? It exists yet remains elusive? The answer, my friends, is wisdom. All right, we're on the last leg of this journey. And we're about to dive into the deliciously practical territory. Ever stood in a mirror maze, surrounded by reflections, not sure which way to go. 
Well, that's what judgments can feel like at times. But not to worry, we've got some stoic navigational tools here, courtesy of our man Marcus Aurelius. First up, we need to treat our judgments like we treat a new car. You wouldn't just trust any mechanic with your shiny new ride, would you? Well, don't just trust your initial judgments either. Test them, scrutinize them, under the harsh light of ProSoak. The mechanic might just be trying to sell you an expensive part you don't need, just like our minds sometimes sell us an opinion or feeling that's not really serving us. Now, what about those moments when life throws a curveball and you just want to scream into a pillow? Or maybe you prefer yelling at the rain, I'm not here to judge. But imagine a world where you could just shrug, like Atlas without the weight of the world on his shoulders. That's apathia, and it's like wearing a raincoat on a stormy day. You might get a bit damp, but you're not going to get drenched. Now, here's a thought that might shake things up a bit. Is it really a catastrophe if the coffee shop is out of your favorite muffin? Or if you miss that green light by a second? Do those things actually impact your life in any significant way? Well, that's just putting on those stoic spectacles and looking at life a little differently. And just for fun, imagine life as a game of chess. You're the player, not the pawn. You control your moves, but you can't control your opponents. That's life, in all its glory, a dance between what we control and what we don't. Marcus Aurelius once said, You have power over your mind not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. So friends, take these tips, give them a whirl, try on a new perspective, and let's continue to question, to explore, and to grow. Up until next time, take care, and see you soon.